Yo, what is up you guys? Welcome back to another very exciting video tutorial. So in this video tutorial, you are going to be setting up the general layout of the settings view controller, set up auto layout constraints, and last but not least, connect the IB outlets and IB actions for the interface elements. But before I end off this intro, I just want to answer a question in the comments. So this comment over here asks, when is part 4 or 5 coming out? Well, part 4 is coming up now. So first, I'm going to open up the drawing app Xcode project. Now, I'm going to head into my main.storyboard. And over here, this is where we'll actually set up the settings view controller. So I'm going to drag in a new view controller, like so. Let's drag it into the main.storyboard. And now we'll actually start to set up the layout of the settings view controller. So first, I want to give the user an option to exit out of this settings view controller. To do that, I need a button. And let's put it in the top left corner of the settings view controller. I also want an image view right over here and I want the dimensions of this image view to be 140 by 140. I can do that by clicking on the image view, click on this ruler icon and change the width to 140 and change the height to 140 as well. Now let me just reposition it like so. So this is good. And the next thing I want to do is I want to have the option to actually adjust both the brush opacity as well as the brush size. To do that, I'm going to use a slider. So let's have a slider. So let's drag in a slider over here and drag in a second slider from the object library. So the first slider is for adjusting the brush size and the second one is for adjusting the brush opacity. But we also need to adjust the colors range values so there are three main values, the RGB values, and we need to have one slider for each of the RGB values. So we need to have three more additional sliders. So let's drag in three more, like so. So that's basically it. Now we need to have a label to tell the user what each slider does. So let's have a label for this. And remember that this is for the brush size. And let me just customize this label. So what I'm going to do is to click on this label, click on the attributes inspector. And then I want to change the font size to something around 21. Then I'm going to change the font to custom. Let's change the font to something like Evan and Next. And the style, I'm going to change it to medium. Let me just change the font size again to 21 and set the color to a little bit dark gray, like so. Then I'm going to double click on this and change the text value of this label to something called brush size. Okay, something like this is good. Now I want to expand the slider such that it reaches the edge of the view controller. Okay, so this is good. And I'm going to do the same for the rest of the sliders as well. And let me just command C, command V. And change this to opacity. Like so. And let me just expand such that it matches the width of this label. Now for the red, green and blue, I'm going to do is to also do the same, just expand the sliders such that it matches the width of the sliders that we just modified just now. So let's do that. But I'm going to allow the user to identify which is red, green, blue by changing the color tracks of the slider. So to do that, I'm going to click on this and I want this slider to represent red. So I'm going to change the minimum track to rate 
by changing to the RGB sliders and adjusting to red to the maximum. And for the green, I'm going to set it to the minimum. Same goes for the blue and now it appears red. Close this and do the same for the next slider, but this time we're going to do it for green. So set the red to zero, but set the green to the maximum. And same goes for the, the last slider, but this time it's blue. Let me just adjust it back and set the blue slider to the maximum, like so. Next, I'm going to click on the view over here. And let's change the background color to a little bit grayish. Okay, so this is too dark. Okay, I think this is good. This is good. And over here, you can see the green is kind of too glaring. It's too bright. So what I'm going to do is we'll actually change the green such that it's a little bit darker. And this is good. It still represents green. So now what I'm going to do now is to select this label. Command C, Command V. Command V again to paste it. Command V one last time to paste it. And Okay, so that's how you do it. Now what you want to do is to click on this label. And then you want to change the color to red. So let's drag the red slider all the way to the maximum. And drag 0 for the green and blue sliders respectively. Click on this. And we are going to set the color of this to be green. So we just set this to 0, 0. So remember we didn't exactly set it to the maximum. So what we need um, to actually do is... Let's give it a rough estimate, like so. This is fine. Doesn't look too bad. Now let's click on this label. And we're going to change the color to the maximum blue. Like so. So now we have the corresponding RGB colors. What's left is to actually change the text. So I'm going to click on this label. And change the text of this to be red. Change this to be green. And change this to be blue. Excellent. So let me just match up so that it looks nice. So I'm just realigning things so that it looks nice. And now it's time to set up constraints. But before that, I'm going to click on this. Change the font size. I mean, change the font to custom, change the family to ever the next and change the style to medium and change the size to 21. Now I'll double click on it and type in dismiss because this will allow us to dismiss the settings view controller. And now I'm going to change the text color uh, to something a little bit grayish. Okay, this is actually not bad, not bad. Okay, so now we have everything set up. What's left is to set up auto layout constraints. But before that, I forgot to set up constraints for the UI image view. So click on the UI image view. And basically just select all the four sides because we want the UI image view to stretch out to the edges of the screen. Like so. And now let's set up constraints for this view controller. So now you're going to click on this. And I want to pin this 8 pixels on the top, 0 pixels on the left, and let's give this a fixed width and height. So it looks good. Now for the image view, what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to pin it 8 pixels on the top. As well, I'll give this a fixed height and width. Then I'm going to realign it horizontally in the container, like so. Now, I'm going to click on the boss size. And let's pin it 0 pixels on the left. And 1, 3, 2 pixels is okay. Then I want to like this. Then let's give it a fixed width and height. And we'll do the same for this. Pin it 9 pixels on the top. 0 pixels on the left. And give it a fixed width and height. So for the rate, it's basically the same thing. All we just do is just add in the constraints.
So last but not least for the blue, 21 pixels on the top, 0 pixels on the left, and give it a fixed width and height. If all appears blue, means you're good to go. Now what's left is the sliders. So we're going to do select the sliders, and I'm going to click both of these, such that it will stretch out to the edge of the label, as well as the edge of the screen, regardless of any screen size. Then I'm going to paint it from the top as well. Let's add three constraints. And if all appears blue, means everything is fine. And we are going to do the same thing for the rest of the sliders. So let's do this for the red. For the two pixels on the top. And stretch out to the width. Stretch out to the edges of the elements. Let's do the same. Select all of these. Then add three constraints. Last but not least, do it for the blue slider. Add three constraints and we're done. So now we're going to preview it on other screen sizes. To do that, I can just click on this button. And as you can see, it looks a little bit too squished. But the functionality is there. Um, the functionality is there as well for the um, our main view controller. It looks a little bit squished and stuff like that. Of course, we can actually fix that. Um, what we can do is select this. And let's modify constraints. Let's change the leading space to minus 5, such that it's a little bit further from the your image view. Let's go back and cool. Everything looks not bad. It doesn't look squished. I mean, it does look a little bit squished, but not as bad as the previous one. And I'm just going to stick things for now. And looks good on the iPhone SE as well, iPhone 7, and the iPhone 7 Plus. Excellent. So I'm going to head back to the iPhone 7 and fix a little bit of things. So first I'm going to select both of these sliders. And I'm going to change the minimum track color of these sliders to a little bit grayish. Because I don't like the default blue color. And let's set it something like a bit darker. Okay, this is fine. This is cool. So basically, this will allow us to dismiss the view controller. Then this image view will allow us to preview the brush size opacity as well as the colors. Then these sliders will allow us to modify the properties that we have specified over here. Okay, excellent. So now that we have set up the layer of our settings view controller, what we need to do now is to create a view controller class for our settings view controller. So let's create a new file. This is a Cocoa Touch class. And make sure this is a subclass of a UI view controller. And I'm going to call this settings VC. VC just stands for view controller. Let's click next and create it. Now heading back to main storyboard. Select this view controller. And then I change the class of this to the settings VC. Okay, so now click on this view controller. Press the assistant editor. You should be automatically directed to the settings VC. Okay. Now you're ready to start connecting some IB outlets as well as IB actions. So first we're going to connect the IB action for this dismiss button. So click on this, right click and drag. And let's call this dismiss and make sure this is an action and click connect. For the image view, I'm going to connect. I give this a name of image view and click connect like so. And for the brush size as well, because I want the brush size text to change as the slider moves. So let's connect this and let's call this the brush size label and click connect. And we're going to do the same thing for the opacity. So opacity label. And we're going to do the same thing for red, green, and blue. So red label. This will be called green label. Unsurprisingly, this should be called blue label. And click connect. So now that we've connected the IB outlets for the labels, what's left is for the sliders. So let's connect the IB actions. For both of these sliders first, let's click on this, drag, 
and I'm going to call this brush size changed and make sure to change this connection to an action instead and click connect and we're going to do the same thing for this slide as well opacity changed make sure to change the connection to an action and click connect so now what we need to do is to connect both the IB actions as well as the IB outlets for the sliders. You will see why in part 5 of Make a Drawing App series. So let's right click and drag the slider in. Let's call this red slider and click connect. Unsurprisingly, this will be called green slider. And last but not least, this will be called blue slider. Now let's connect some IB actions for three of the sliders. Correct, and I'm going to call this red slider changed. Make sure to change this to an action. And we're going to do the same for the green as well as the blue. So green slider changed. Change this to an action. And drag this one more time and call this blue slider changed. And make sure to change this to an action and click connect. Okay, so now that we have connected all the necessary IB outlets and IB actions for the settings view controller. I think it's good to take a break now. And of course, you didn't really learn too much from this. All we just did was to set up the layout of the settings view controller. But we actually have done a lot. And in the next video tutorial, we are going to be writing some code to make our settings view controller fully functional. And if you benefited from this video tutorial or enjoyed, um, be sure to leave this video a thumbs up. And if you have any suggestions, uh, just leave a comment down below in the comment section. And as I said, I will listen to your suggestions. And until then, this is Ben. Peace out.